Symmetry is everywhere in our daily lives, from famous works of art to the natural world. The earlier years of musculoskeletal medicine are rooted in this symmetry mindset. That pain is related to faults and structural alignment of various parts of the body. The idea that symmetry needs to be achieved in order to be pain-free and healthy. And any deviation requires correction. Patients are commonly labeled with diagnoses such as leg-length discrepancies, pelvic malalignment, and spinal subluxations. Words that sound technical and serious, but for the most part are often benign and a gross misrepresentation of the cause of someone's pain. In this video, we will break down the concept of alignment, manual therapy's big lie. Many health professionals have and continue to subscribe to the idea that many common aches and pains of the world are caused by flaws in body alignment. And no profession has ingested more of the alignment Kool-Aid than the chiropractic profession. But they're not the only ones. Many physical therapists and massage therapists continue to preach the gospel of alignment to justify treatment. There are even some orthopedic surgeries being performed on the grounds of correcting identified structural changes seen on x-rays and MRIs, despite mounting evidence that there is very little correlation between pain and what is seen on diagnostic imaging. And while alignment can play a role in someone's pain, it is often a very small role in the majority of cases. I'm talking smaller than Vin Diesel's role in the Marvel movies. Let's look at the conceptual flaws in this alignment-based theory of treating pain. For one, it is an incredibly simplistic way of viewing pain. It implies that altered alignment results in pain, and normal alignment results in no pain. This binary means of thinking fails to consider the complexity of human neurobiology, as well as the immense emotional, social, and environmental influences of pain. Instead, it reduces the body to a bunch of on-off buttons and switches that can be pushed and pulled on. But this isn't the case. Just look around. You can easily find people with scoliosis or other deformities, sometimes quite severe, who report no pain at all, while those who are deemed to have good alignment experience severe pain daily. But okay, let's just say for a moment that malalignment does equal pain. That would also imply that someone with malalignment should not only have pain, but they should progressively get worse over time. Similar to the worn brakes on the car. Yeah, you may be able to slow down for a little bit, but over time, if you don't replace them, you may find yourself ordering McDonald's drive through inside the building. But that doesn't happen either. People who have pain often experience extended periods of time where the pain either plateaus or improves despite their malalignment. And that's just the conceptual issues. Let's talk clinical application. There are three big clinical hurdles that cause this alignment-focused approach to fall flat on its face. For one, there is no established threshold that identifies or defines the critical level where normal alignment becomes misalignment. Because of this, it is up to the clinician to make a judgment of normal versus abnormal, resulting in inconsistencies and a lack of agreement amongst providers. Two, there are very few clinical measures that have been shown to be valid or reliable enough to justify use in clinical practice to identify malalignments. For all the schooling and skills that manual therapists like to boast, we are laughably bad at identifying partial malalignments with palpation, with studies showing poor reliability of joint palpation and identifying position and mobility of joints. And I know, there are some who believe their years of experience and training have provided them such superhuman palpation skills that they could crack even the most advanced safes using the power of touch only. Sorry. Studies show experience doesn't matter. We are all still bad at it. And the clinical tests used to assess movement of these joints are no better, being equally as bad at detecting joint movement and position. And third, based on this alignment viewpoint, Treatment should be able to alter joint position to restore alignment, but producing musculoskeletal changes is not that simple. You see, tissue adaptation is dependent on the length and frequency of exposure to stretch, meaning long duration stretching is required to provide sufficient stretch force that would result in any meaningful long-term changes in tissue flexibility. And this would have to be maintained with specific exercises over time. But most manual techniques utilized to correct malalignments consist of quick push or pull that does not place anywhere near enough stretch on the tissue that would cause a meaningful change. Let's further highlight this point by taking a closer look at the SI joint. There's a group of manual therapists out there that believe the SI joint is the Pandora's box when it comes to back pain. 
They flaunt their magical ability to assess pelvic alignment, identify pelvic obliquities and sacral torsions, and provide treatment to restore alignment. Again, easy to understand, sounds plausible, and gets patients to buy in. But it's nonsense, and totally disregards the normal variability of pelvic alignment in people. A study dissected pelvic cadavers and measured the angles between the ASIS and PSIS, two bony landmarks that are commonly utilized by clinicians to identify pelvic alignment. They found high variability between angles, from 0 to 23 degrees difference between pelvises. They even found a wide range of side-to-side -side differences in the same pelvis, with up to 11 degrees in rotation and 16 millimeters in height. This variability makes it impossible for clinicians to tell if these landmarks are higher or lower due to the malalignment or simply due to the skeletal variation. And what about the magical treatment used to align the SI joint? A study looked specifically at this utilizing a series of specialized x-ray machines to create three-dimensional images of pelvic alignment pre- and post-manipulative therapy. In none of the subjects did the manipulative techniques change the position of the joints in the pelvis. So not only can clinicians not accurately assess pelvic or sacral alignment, but they also can't even induce changes in position of the targeted joints. But once you've gone down the alignment rabbit hole, it's hard to pull yourself out, with many clinicians' minds so entrenched in this mindset that they fail to see situations that completely contradict their own beliefs, as they are blinded by their own bias. And it's not even like this evidence is new. There are decades worth of evidence demonstrating a poor correlation between structural malalignments and pain. For example, a study took radiographic measurements of individuals with various degrees of knee arthritis. They found pain did not correlate to the degree of severity of arthritis, with some patients with very mild arthritis experiencing severe pain, and some patients with severe arthritis experiencing very little pain. So what's the deal? Well, researchers attribute this heightened pain levels in the group with mild arthritis to an increase in their pain sensitivity, also known as central sensitization, a phenomenon that causes an amplification of pain processing that is not reflective of tissue injury or alignment. Another study showed that despite sporadic episodes of symptoms in individuals with low back pain over a period of five years, there was no association with changes in spinal degeneration or damage seen on MRI. What about leg length discrepancies? While studies investigating people who have acquired leg length discrepancies later in life as a consequence of disease or surgery had a poor correlation between leg length and low back pain. But why do healthcare professionals still subscribe to the philosophy of alignment equals health, despite the mountain of evidence stating otherwise? Well, besides complete ignorance of current evidence, there are several reasons. For one, there is a huge gap in learning in the healthcare education system when it comes to pain. As mentioned, pain is immensely complex and multifactorial, and explaining pain to patients is challenging, taking expertise and skill, which many providers do not possess. And this is not a knock on any provider, but a simple truth. Most healthcare providers get minimal to no pain science education while in school, and it is up to the individual to educate themselves. Not helping the issue is a number of alignment gurus out there pushing continuing education courses that reinforce these non-evidence-based concepts for monetary gain. Another reason is the pressure to provide a definitive cause of someone's pain. After all, we should know. We're the professional, right? While a specific source of pain may be able to be found in some cases, the vast majority of cases of pain cannot be attributed to any specific structure in the body. And that's okay. Any clinician worth their salt does not necessarily need to know the exact pain source all the time to get a person better, because pain is just a symptom, just a piece of the musculoskeletal puzzle. But the pressure to put a label on it, to demonstrate competence and explain someone's pain, often results in scary sounding labels that provide minimal clinical value. Much of the alignment jargon that patients are labeled with can lead to a lesser sense of well-being and still a greater sense of dependence on medical professionals and ironically can lead the patient down the road of chronic pain. To recap, there is something to be said about the simplicity of this approach. It feels good to identify positional faults and believe you can fix it with a quick push or pull. It takes the enormous complexities of pain and simplifies it into a manner that is easier to understand for both the patient and clinician. But in doing so, it perpetuates the many diagnostic biases that are simply wrong. It promotes misguided treatments that may have no relevance on enhancing the health and well-being of our patients. Do manual therapy techniques work to help reduce pain? 
Yes, there is evidence for this, and for reasons we are still trying to understand. But it is certainly not due to correcting alignment. We can be sure of that. Because for a body that has been deemed to be so mechanical, consisting of a series of gooey joints and levers, pain sure does respond in a very non-mechanical way. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Physio Show. Make sure you like and subscribe to our channel to receive more physical therapy related content.